Hi everybody and welcome to our Thursday TNT. Big news story broke yesterday, reported pretty much in all the Thai media as well as overseas. And from Associated Press, Thailand's National Police Chief is suspended amid concerns about a possible power struggle. Don't you just love that photo of the police chief and his deputy, Surachat Hakpan? Come here, I'll give you a big hug. And Thailand's National Police Chief and one of his deputies were temporarily suspended under the order of Prime Minister Seta Tawisin yesterday as accusations that the deputy was involved in an illegal online gambling ring sparked concerns about a possible power struggle in the police department. And Torsak Sukwimon, who was appointed to the top police post in October last year, and Surachat Hakpan, one of his deputy chiefs, were temporarily moved to inactive posts in the office of the Prime Minister, which directly supervises the police department. Surachat's been accused of involvement with illegal online gambling websites, the charges he denies. And Thailand's National Police Agency has a tradition, says the Associated Press, a fierce internal politicking, as well as long-standing reputation for corruption at all levels. Now, this story widely reported, including in NationThailand.com, ongoing Rao prompts Sata to transfer big tour, big joke, to inactive posts. There certainly seems to be a little bit more tension in that particular photo at their media conference yesterday. Seems to be a lot of bigs in the National Thai Police, big tour, big joke, and another deputy Royal Thai Police Chief, Kitirat Big Thai. Now he'll likely become the caretaker National Police Chief. And the Prime Minister said that though he felt uneasy about ordering the transfers, they were necessary because he did not want Torsak and Surachat to interfere in the probe into allegations of bribe and money laundering the latter faces. And the two senior police officers uh, said they will leave the investigation in the hands of the National Anti-Corruption Commission and not interfere. They'd better take their phones away in that case. And we've never had a conflict, they said, with one another. And from now on, if there's a dispute in the Royal Thai Police, it does not stem from us. Then the article in NationThailand.com has uh, quite a long bit of background. I'll let you read that in the NationThailand.com story uh, if you want to find out exactly what's going on with that story. Also been widely covered in all other Thai media. In the English media side, we've got uh, Thai PBS World, Torsak and Surachat transferred, and Bangkok Post reporting Police Chief Torsak, Deputy Surachat transferred to inactive posts. So those two officially sent to the naughty corner and we'll just have to see how the uh, investigation by the NACC goes ahead. Now to follow up on the story about the Russian woman on Kopangan and her kicking of a pregnant uh, retail storekeeper, uh, an interesting article I found which I thought, well, it has got the information we need, plus a whole lot more. And we go to Thai.news, Thailand breaking news, website I'd not really heard of before, but uh, interesting use of AI, including the photos as well as the text. Here, for example, is the uh, headline photo, clearly AI. It has uh, some pregnant Thai women and the sign, please take off your shoes. It's sort of an odd sign. It doesn't really finish very well. Your shoes. Well, then the story does indeed cover all the main points, but it does it in a somewhat fruity, rather AI style. And imagine basking in the tropical paradise of Kopangan, where the air is filled with the scent of the sea, exotic fruits, and the promise of unforgettable adventures. This idyllic setting, however, was the backdrop for an event that sounds more like a scene from a soap opera than a day in paradise. Now, you know most of the story, so we'll just get to uh, some of the latest information in the style of Tide.news. When Santika, in her gentle manner, reminded Alina of the no-shoe policy, she might have well as lit the fuse to a firework. The situation escalated quicker than a tropical storm. Words were exchanged, tempers flared, and in the heat of the moment, Alina's foot found its way to Satika's leg, not once, but twice. The store, once a haven of tranquility, was suddenly the stage for an inexplicable display of aggression. Well, from this rather colourful prose to somewhat of an explanation, 
As if taken from a page of a dramatic novel, Alina offered an apology to Satika, attributing her hot temper to her menstrual cycle. It was an apology that, while accepted, did little to undo the distress caused. The wheels of justice began to turn, with the local police ordering the case to be pursued diligently, and discussions about revoking Alina's visa began to circulate. And it finishes with this tale punctuated by the bizarre, the dramatic and the unexpected, serves as a reminder of the delicate balance between cultures the importance of respect and the unforeseen challenges that can arise from the simplest of requests. And it's a story woven into the fabric of Kopangan's tapestry, a place of beauty, intrigue, and now a reminder that paradise too has its rules. So they just sort of need to turn down the flowery factor a little bit, but an interesting way of reporting using AI generated photos as well as AI generated text. But, uh, well, that is the latest, one way or another, about uh, the situation on Kopangan between the Russian woman and the pregnant uh, Thai shopkeeper. Now, Thursday's TNT, and no specific new information about the uh, situation with the two Kiwi brothers. However, Patia Mail has found a way to keep the story going one way or another. And first signs of concern about visa-exempt mass tourists, using a photo, a screenshot uh, from that altercation in Chelong last Saturday, and a top national policeman has raised the alarm about foreign tourists breaking the law and behaving disgracefully. Another one of the deputy police chiefs has ordered the Immigration Bureau to toughen up law enforcement. In recent months, there's been alarming reports about foreigners attacking Thai nationals, gambling in illegal casinos and working without authorised permits. Now, it's not just recent months. These stories pop up from time to time and have done so for the past two or three decades. Equally worrying, says the story to law enforcers, is the apparently widespread practice of owning real estate or establishing business enterprises via use of Thai nominees, which is an illegal practice. The latest concerns appear to be a result of tourists from more and more countries being allowed to enter Thailand without a visa. And the Thai government has recently extended the privilege of visa-exempt status to China, Russia, India and several smaller nations that would include Taiwan and Kazakhstan. Uh, between 85 and 90 per cent of arriving foreign tourists no longer require prior documentation. I think it's now a total of nearly 70 countries that can enter Thailand without having to pre-apply for a visa. And Thai commentators on social media say there's a contradiction between Thailand wanting to expand seamless travel, come what may, to boost income on a grandiose scale with a traditional approach to law and order. Moreover, there's now a wad of evidence, claims the article, to show that much cash-based abuse by foreigners is made possible by police corruption or favouritism. Well, again, that situation really nothing new, but uh, somewhat reminded in that article in uh, patiamail.com written by Barry Kenyon. And now to some sudden storms hitting Bangkok and nearby areas yesterday. And we go to thaipbsworld.com. Widespread flooding, traffic gridlock, the summer storm hits Bangkok. Well, it's not quite summer. Summer doesn't really start until the middle of the year. But uh, yes, it certainly is the hot season. And widespread flooding resulting in traffic gridlock was reported in Bangkok yesterday morning after a summer storm. Many commuters were seen wading along the flooded roads in the Dindang area, some with their shoes removed. But it wasn't only in Bangkok, also down in Chombury, this reported by the thepatianews.com, heavy rain causes terrible flash floods in Sirasha and Chombury. And two hours of heavy rainfall triggered devastating flash floods in several areas of Sirasha district in Chombury province. And this happened on Tuesday. According to the Patia News reporters, the most significant flooding occurred at the intersection under the Nongyai Bu Bridge in the Nongko area of Nongkam sub-district. Water levels rose to nearly one metre, totally blocking small cars and motorcycles from passing. The Patia News reporters observed motorcycles submerged in the floodwaters, forcing motorists to push them through the current. This resulted in significant congestion in the area. 
and some rust. So time to dry out uh, some of those motorcycles and cars around uh, Bangkok and down into Jombri and Satahip. So in recent times, there's been stories about possible casinos starting in Thailand. A big report's just been prepared and will be presented to the cabinet, uh, well, probably very soon. So no surprise there's been a story like this emerge. Deputy Prime Minister Anaton leads massive gambling den raid operation in Nantabri. Over 300 gamblers captured. I wonder which side of the argument Kun Anaton is on. At 10 p.m. on March the 19th, the Deputy PM Anaton Shavitakun and relevant agencies of more than 100 individuals launched a raid operation on a massive gambling den in Bang Yai, Nontabri. As a result, more than 300 gamblers were captured and locals in the area filed complaint reports that a local influential figure was illegally operating a massive gambling den. And upon the police investigation, it was found the gambling den was completely fenced and could station more than 100 vehicles inside, the 300 vehicles outside. The secret agent then disguised as a gambler to infiltrate the facility. And it had strict security measures as more than five guards with communication devices were stationed inside the building. And the guards would thoroughly check every new visitor who needed to be invited by a regular gambler. They were trying to keep this quiet. Didn't work. And the regular gamblers reportedly were rich people as many luxury cars were spotted parking outside the facility. It was assumed by the police that the gambling den generated a large amount of money daily. And then meanwhile, an upcoming deliberation in Parliament concerning the legalisation of casinos is scheduled for March the 28th, as announced by the Deputy Finance Minister, who was also the person who wrote the report about the possibility of introducing casinos into Thailand. Now, the Thai Prime Minister has been busy flitting around the world, meeting all sorts of important people and a buffalo. NationThailand.com reporting Thailand's star buffalo meets Seta to push for soft power status. And Kot Muang Pet is 180 centimetres tall and weighing an impressive 1.5 tonnes, made a grand appearance at Government House uh, yesterday morning despite the torrential rain. And he was taken to Government House to meet the Prime Minister to help push for the promotion of Thai buffaloes as a symbol of soft power. Nothing particularly soft about a 180 centimetre tall uh, albino buffalo. And Sata, who's 192 centimetres tall himself, went nose to nose with the magnificent animal, exclaiming, I had no idea there was ever such a beautiful buffalo before. Cue the music to Careless Whispers. And when asked about the buffalo's characteristics and age, the owner says Ko Muang Pet was not yet fully grown and could potentially reach 1.8 tonnes by the time he turned seven. Buffaloes generally live for 30 to 40 years. Now you know, but it wasn't just buffaloes that the Prime Minister was meeting yesterday. Another important visitor arrived, reported in cowsodenglish.com. Indeed, Sato rejoices Cameron's praise for Thailand. And the Prime Minister posted just one word, indeed, to retweet the message of Britain's Foreign Secretary following his first official visit to Thailand on March the 20th. And Lord Cameron said, Thailand is one of the biggest economies in Southeast Asia. Our trading relationship is worth around £6 billion a year. I want to build on that. Working together, we can promote security in the region and jobs and growth in the UK. He paid a courtesy call on the Thai leader at Government House uh, yesterday. I wonder if he had to wait for the buffalo to finish. And both were pleased that Thailand and the UK formally announced the goal of upgrading their relations as strategic partners. And Lord Cameron signed the Thailand-UK Strategic Partnership Roadmap, which officially elevates their bilateral relations to strategic partnership. Both sides discussed trade and economic promotion through the launch of the Thailand-UK Free Trade Agreement, which will build upon the progress of the Enhanced Trade Partnership, as well as cooperation in security, science and technology, tourism, education and visa exemptions for Thai ordinary passport holders. 
You shouldn't automatically read into that that uh, suddenly people from the UK are going to be getting an extended visa exemption. I'm sure that was probably discussed, but uh, that's not really on the cards. And with that, hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around Thailand. A busy day for me today. Hopefully you have a good Thursday. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. We look forward to seeing you next time.